Okay, um, here we are again, and this is Monday. And I don't know if you heard that voice saying that this meeting is being recorded, because that's exactly what is being done. And Pat McGarrett doesn't mind one little bit. Isn't that right, Pat? Not in the least. Without a recording, we wouldn't be here. Now you have nothing to hide. I think that, that, that I think that the only two people actually hear this meeting is being recorded are me and you. <laughs> it's good to have at least an audience of two, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's isn't just it? us. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway. Um, the uh, political world here is unfolding as we speak, uh, although it may be stretched, as you pointed out to me just before we went on air uh, over the next week. But it's got to do with puts and puts fulfilling, as he says, he's going to do the new decade, new deal, or new, what is it, new decade? A uh, new decade, new deal, yeah, yeah. Right. that's it. Um, uh, and Sinn Féin have, on two occasions, yesterday and today, I think it was uh, Conor Murphy said, that uh, they had scoped out the Edwin Putz and his uh, sincerity. And their assessment was that he's being disingenuous by saying publicly he's going to honor the agreements, the commitments that were made in the NDNND. Um, would you say they're being uh, overly suspicious or would you say they're just being. No, Jude, I, I, I don't think so, not at all. Like this, this was agreed. Uh, it's been stretched out and stretched out and stretched out. And I, I heard, I, I caught the, I was in Derry this morning and I didn't hear, but I caught the tail end of the um, talk back and David Campbell was on and basically uh, is suggesting that there's no way that the, uh, this is acceptable to the quote, the unionist or loyalist people. By the way, Jim, here's a quick question for you. Remember when they used to say Sinn Féin IRA? Should they refer now to the, uh, uh, the DUP UDA or DUP LCC <laughs> or the DUP uh, you know, UVF because um, it looks like the loyalist community is leading the the, the, uh, the DUP by the, the well. Oh, well the to, be, to be fair to him now, uh, there would be the, the, when they said Sinn Féin IRA, what they meant, what they were saying was that uh, Sinn Féin was the political arm of uh, the IRA with uh, this LCC. I don't think I think the DUP are claiming that they just occasionally meet with them, but they're not. They're not. Uh, no, no, to... that's not the point. No, that's not the point I'm making. The LCC seem to be making policy for the DUP. That's they the are, point that's I'm making. Yeah, 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 I would agree. They're really putting the squeeze on, but I, I, yeah. I wouldn't see them as separate organisations. Um, mm. But they, yeah, they are sort of calling the shots. And and David, what's his name? David Campbell, is it? Campbell, yeah. He was listened to. I listened to talk back today, and he was uh, given an audience as if he were. Uh, an elected official. Uh, Stephen, yeah. Stephen Farry of the Alliance Party actually made that point. Why is this guy on all the time? That he doesn't yeah. speak for anybody. He hasn't been elected and so on. But to, to, get, to get back to your point, I, if, I, if I was Sinn Féin, they, uh, they were, it was an agreement uh, about an Irish language act 18 months ago. That's mm -hmm. why the um, Starman got back up and running. Here, we, There's no sign of, you know, in other words, uh, like, I would say, putting it mildly, it was duplicitous uh, what the, the DUP have done. They're trying to say COVID caused this and all that. Dude, that is absolute rubbish. Basically, uh, there are certain hardline people in the uh, loyalist uh, unionist community who think, see culturally that anything that the nationals get is a, a loss to them. Mm -hmm. And they want Northern Ireland to remain British in the sense of its purest sense that uh, almost anything Irish doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. That they want their union jacks and their royal family and all that. Dude, I have no problem with them having that, but I would seriously take issue with the fact that the nationalist people or, you know, Republicans or anybody want to say the native Irish, we'll call them, are quite entitled to have a language act which recognises the ancient language of this country. Yeah. Well, what, what about if, um, and as I understand it, in fact, there is also uh, promises about Ulster Scots. If um, Puts was given the opportunity to say, yeah, we'll go with the Irish language act, uh, along with the, we'll call it a cultural act or something. Yeah, I think, I think that's what they're going to call it. Exactly the same sort of terms for the Ulster Scots. Would you would you go along with that or do you think that's likely? No, no but, uh, uh, what do you call him? Jim Lannister's already said if they try to sell that one, he says, I, my advice would be to them to th think again. Right. Uh, this is to the DUP. No, he says it's unacceptable. Uh, it seems to be that uh, they the, the really think they don't really care about Ulster Scots. The, the big thing the unions have and the lawyers have a problem with is this thing about the uh, it's a, about a cultural identity. And what's really at uh, uh, play here is it's the acceptance of 
a cultural identity for a large section of the people who live in Northern Ireland. Okay. So if they accept that, it's no longer the pure British system. Okay, so supposing Shin, supposing the, um, Edwin was to say, okay, well, uh, at some point in the course of our term in office, uh, before the next election, we'll, 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 uh, we'll bring forward an Irish Language Act. Uh, it might be January, February, March, who knows, uh, but we'll, 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 we'll do it then. Uh, would that be acceptable to you or? Well, I, I, would, I, 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 I would, you know, it's, it's the old thing, you know, you, you use all these metaphors like kicking the can and cliches, sorry, down the road and, you know, how long's a piece of string. After he said, right, by January of 2022, we will have an act on the table. I would say, okay, right, let's test your good faith. We'll go along with that. But see, at the end of January 2022, there is no Irish language act we pulled down Stormont. I think that maybe part of their difficulty is that they, they you can't really talk about it. Uh, well, January 22, yeah. I see yeah. you think. Oh, sorry, hold on a second. I want to just stop this. Yeah. 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 Right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that, okay. uh, uh, yeah. audience. Sorry about that, Pat. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, I, I, have, I have a feeling, I forgot what the point was I was going to make there, but uh, yeah. I have a feeling that. Um, uh, I was talking about 2022. But, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. but I, I have a feeling what, what um, Sinn Féin should be looking for is a hard timetable, which is what you've indicated. Yeah. If they say a specific, by a specific date. Uh, but that doesn't give them much, very much time, really, does it? You know, we're now. No, well, the, the, the next, the next uh, elections are scheduled, aren't they, for May next year? Yeah. So, well, what, what seems to be happening now, right, is uh, under the legislation, the current legislation, once Arlene gave her speech today, and resigned at one o'clock. Michelle O'Neill uh, went with her. They have seven days to now to renominate. And if, as far as I, my understanding is, if Sinn Fein don't get a commitment from uh, uh, what do you call them from the DUP to um, get an Irish Language Act, they are not going to renominate anybody. So therefore, the whole problem is going to be uh, that that uh, down comes Stormont, because if they don't renominate, uh, uh, obviously it can't go up. Okay, so 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 down comes Stormont, right? So yeah. I, I let's take a you mentioned Jim Allister, and I would say that that would be a big factor with Edwin in this decision about the Irish Language Act. If he yeah. was to give an okay to the Irish Language Act, he would be fulfilling what they committed themselves to, but it would be seen as going soft, and yeah. the people that are leaving the DEP are going to Jim Allister. So Jim Allister would have a field day, yeah. right? So now supposing he doesn't. Put in place the Irish Language Act. Um, there's not going to be the way they're talking. There's not going to be a deputy first minister. Uh, no. Sinn Féin won't put one forward. So there'll have to be an election, right? Yeah, yeah. And if there's an election, um, I'm not sure that either side want that. I'd say the DUP most certainly don't want it. Absolutely um, not. Uh, but does Sinn Féin? Want, I, I actually think that both parties, both Sinn Féin and the DUP. Will, will not want an election because of what other people would think. And, and if the case of the DUP, they'd be thinking, what would the TUV, what would Jim Allister think of this? Yeah. How would it play? Yeah. With Sinn Féin, they would be thinking, how will this play down south? Will yeah. we look as if we're being obstructionist? Yeah. Uh, are we uh, not uh, prepared to make sacrifices for peace? Are we not working with the unionists, etc.? And as a result, that might put a dint on that poll that was yeah. the, it came out the other day. You saw that poll, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, uh, 34, we're, uh, 30, in, yeah. we're on 34 percent, and yeah. uh, the next thing to them was uh, Fine Gael on 24. 24, and, uh, 10, uh, 10 points. And Fine and 20. You know, I mean, yeah. it's enormous. Lead. Well, well you, you see, uh, uh, right, you, uh, Edwin Poots might have very little room to maneuver. He, he, you know, he's, he's sort of caught in a punter movement. But I think Sinn Féin might sort of risk it on the basis they're saying, look, wait a minute. Uh, I heard um, Colin Eastwood on saying, look, waiting lists, COVID, all these things are far more important than an Irish language act and so on. But uh, like, I don't know, I'm not 100% certain that's reading it. It's not It's not the Irish language act people are hearing, but it's the, uh, the, the, what do you call it? the acceptance of the other community. It's symbolic. Uh, that's what this is all about. The, the right of people here to have an Irish language act. Mm -hmm. You have an, an, in Scotland, there's a, a language act, and Wales, there's a language act, and Dublin, there's a language act. Mm -hmm. So, why 
or should the people living in Northern Ireland. And that I think the symbolism of this is far more important than uh, than the actual thing itself, because it's not going to change any loyalist life an Irish language act. But that's what the point is. It's recognition that there's another community here and they have rights. Yeah, but Edwin is damned if he doesn't, damned if he doesn't. Yeah. If he does. Well, but hold on, uh, hold on. He knew that when uh, um, Arding Foster was there and he still, uh, so he's, he's at Karma, he's got himself into this. But by the way, you just, you've said something there. Arding Foster in her leaving speech today said it should go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, in some ways, I pity Edwin. I, I, some ways, because I don't think he can win here. If yeah. he doesn't, if he gives the okay to it, Stormont will stay in place, but he'll be so damaged that, you know, the TUV will just be, gobble up votes from the yeah. DP. If he, if he doesn't do it, Sinn Féin, as far as they're talking, will not go into government with them, will not nominate a deputy first minister, which case yeah. there'll be an election. And if yeah. there's an election, the way things are looking, Sinn Féin will do extremely well then. Well, Jim, if you, if you look at it, uh, I, I don't know how things will change, but uh, if they're on 34% in the Republic uh, at the latest opinion poll, 10 points ahead of Fin Gael, which is a hell of a deal. Yeah. Uh, and then they look like they're on 25% in, in the North. And uh, with the DUP and uh, various others on or about uh, the Alliance, I think it's around between 16, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. like, so could we have a situation where Sinn Féin is the largest party in the Republic and in government in the North, and it come the next election, if they get 34%, like you're there in government the next time. Uh, so so what's, what's the implications for that for loyalism and unionism? Well, that's true, but you see, that's the events, dear boy. Events, I, well, I'm aware of that. But Sinn Féin in the South are a long way. There's two or three years, four years maybe, is it, before you have uh, another election there? And uh, anything could happen. About three. Yeah, you might, even yeah. have, might even have a border poll with them. Uh, on the yeah. other hand, the election here, uh, I mean, I got election literature the other day from the Alliance Party. Yeah. And there's still 11 months to go. So, so yeah. Um, I, 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 but what do you put something will have to be done one way or another? What what do you think should be done, Pat? Do you know, I don't know. Uh, the biggest problem by a mile, Jude, uh, I was watching uh, I was watching that a lot of the coverage of the G7 over over the weekend. Yeah. And did you sort of realize uh, Northern Ireland is sort of front and center in a lot of things uh, because of this protocol thing? The whole thing about Macron actually saying to uh, by the way, Jude, well, yeah, uh, there was a guy called Jake Sullivan. He's uh, this one of the spokesperson for yeah. uh, Joe Biden, yeah. mm -hmm. Jake Sullivan said he, uh, Biden and Boris had a conversation, but he, he wasn't going to disclose details. Mm -hmm. Macron and Boris had a conversation, and the details of that were disclosed by the British source for their own ends. About when uh, Macron has sort of said uh, uh, Northern Ireland is not part of the UK. By the way, at a certain point, Northern Ireland is on the island of Ireland. It's not on. It's not well, on the he, so. Pat, he didn't actually say uh, it wasn't a part of the UK. He said something about uh, they were were a separate country. No, yeah, separate country. Uh, I, I get confused because they do talk about the four nations. Yeah, that comprises the UK. So yeah. perhaps perhaps he was uh, you know yeah, working. Yeah, in that well, well they, were, they don't. They say Great Britain and Northern Ireland. You know, so like uh, yeah. They, yeah, there is a sense that Northern Ireland's not quite part of that UK. Yeah, but he's right, of course. And I mean, I actually think this is whole thing's a diversion on the part of uh, Boris Johnson. Absolutely. Who, I mean, he doesn't expect the EU to be particularly friendly towards him or yeah. the UK for that matter. Uh, yeah. uh, so uh, they know where the problem lies. It lies in uh, the island of Ireland. There must not yeah. be a border there. And they're pointing out that, you know, this, well, I, I think that maybe uh, Macron, if he said separate country, maybe he could have said it a bit more gently yeah. than that. And yeah. said, well, it's a separate situation. Um, but but, because, uh, but Jude, yesterday morning on, on uh, the Andrew Marr show, it was deliberately uh, brought up, at, at, you know, to uh, give a, you know, you cross it over and I'll head it in type interview. Yeah. Uh, Bars was given, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, you know, he went on about Macron saying this. And he said, let's be clear, we're a United Kingdom. And it was served up to him, like, you know, a free point. You mm -hmm. know, and, uh, but, Jude, let me uh, go back a wee bit now. If you ever want to see the difference between Gary Gibbon on Channel 4 on Saturday interviewed Boris Johnson and uh, yesterday morning Andrew Marr interviewing uh, Dominic Rabb on the same topics, 
Gary Gibbon absolutely destroyed the second, um, you know, the evasions from Boris Johnson. In fact, the finish, uh, um, Boris Johnson must have looked at his press secretary and went, "How much more of this?" You know, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, the anemic uh, coverage that the BBC give to the Tories, they're not really giving them a hard time at all. It's all this sort of within the uh, parameters of a debate. They sort of go at them, but they, they don't really do them damage. Yeah. Gary well, Gibbons started going on about, aren't you another Trump? Haven't you broken your word? And all the rest. And it was the first time I'd heard a British person actually, a uh, commentary person actually going for Boris Johnson. So was this on the on the Channel 4 News or what? Yeah, it was on the Channel 4 oh, News. I mean, Gary Gibbons is, that Channel 4 News is out on its own easily. And, yeah. and Gary Gibbons, maybe the very best of a lot. Is yeah. uh, is always across whenever he's at uh, interview. I, I would seriously advise people who are interested in this sort of stuff to go get it's on it's on YouTube. Gary Gibbons' interview with Boris Johnson. Mm -hmm. He absolutely lacerated and destroyed him. Well, let's again let's be practical about this. We move now from talking about whether or not um, Sinn Fein should accept the fact that uh, uh, poor Edwin can't afford to give the okay to an Irish language act. What do you think? Um, Boris should do about the protocol? Do you think Boris should just swallow and say, well, look, I agreed to this and, you know, we've got to implement it? Because there yeah. are some people who say the fact is that the uh, Boris has always claimed that the food standards in the UK are, if anything, higher than they are in the EU. Right. Yeah. So if yeah. they're higher than they are in the EU, then it shouldn't be any problem about sh yeah. uh, shipping stuff food, any kind of food from uh, Great Britain or to Northern Ireland. Yeah, exactly. Well, the whole problem, of course, is, right, here's, there's two things. They have been offered the Swiss deal, which 80% of the problems, and then, which, they, by the way, they have said, look, it's a temporary arrangement. It gets both of us over the hump. The British don't seem to want to do this. Hmm. But the other side of the story, which, where the EU has got a total point. By the way, Jude, here's the other thing. The, the, the EU and the UK agreed grace periods for these things. So the, 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 so the, e, or the, e, the UK absolutely knew there were problems. That's why they needed the grace periods. They, mm. they, there was an acceptance that there were problems with these sort of things. So mm. to say they didn't know what they were signing up to as rubbish when they insisted on grace periods to try and get this thing sorted out. So that's the first thing. But the other thing, right, uh, where the EU is coming from, if tomorrow morning they, they say to the Britain, Okay, no hassle. Go ahead and do whatever. If suddenly in comes Brazilian beef or a chlorinated chicken hmm. and comes into Northern Ireland and goes down to Ross Lair and gets into um, mainland Europe, yeah. you know, they, they are protecting the single market from the very simple. We want high standards for the, down the track. So we're not going to let a third country change our standards. So, which, by the way, Jude, is totally legitimate. They're saying from here on in, we are protecting. Our single market. If you do a deal with America and bring in chlorinated chicken, or by the way, in Brazil and the beef apparently there's more hormones and antibiotics in them than than uh, than a chemist shop. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is uh, that uh, Britain is, and Johnson has always maintained that they will be keeping their standard at least as high as the EU. So they shouldn't be. Any yeah, but, but should, if they make if they make a deal with America and bring in what they are intending to do. And uh, like, I don't know whether they're going to accept chlorinated chicken, by the way, which is washed in ammonia, which is a very strange sort of thing for a food standard. Yeah, well, the, the way they talk about it, although I have to uh, confess now, put my cards on the table. Anytime I've been in the States and I've been there a few times because my son lives there, uh, or one of my sons, uh, I never asked, to, uh, is there any chicken? Is this, is this chicken chlorinated? It never, yeah, it never crossed my mind. And they all yeah. look pretty healthy. In fact, they all look overweight, everybody yeah. in the US. So yeah. maybe maybe we're picking onto something which might be true, but maybe it's not as terrible as it sounds. Aye, but the, but the point is, dude, the, the chlorinated chicken isn't going to taste any different, but the, the health-giving properties of it are very dodgy. Eaten over a course of a couple of years, they're reckoning... Why aren't Americans dro dropping off dead then? Uh, uh, dude, I can't answer that. I ain't the doctor, I ain't the scientist, but they say it's not good for you. Well, I think the, the main point is whether it's chlorinated chicken or whatever, is that the standards that Britain maintains are the same or better than the EU. They've said that mm -hmm. repeatedly. Yeah. They've also said when they do deals with people, well, obviously they should, uh, they're not going to imperil the sort of standards of, of food that they have in the UK. Mm -hmm. So clearly on both those counts, there's not a problem. All they have They're to do is do a loose 
temporary linkage. You know, let's let's be honest. Honest. You said this before we went on air. This has nothing to do with uh, economics or is this is politics. It's mm. playing politics. This is all about politics. Like the EU have offered them a way out. But that's very simple, which I'm sure would be an easy sell. Look, right here, we're going to agree this Swiss deal. It's temporary. It gets all sort of another. Uh, but Boris is playing to the English National Gallery out there, uh, as was clear yesterday morning about that thing about uh, Macron, about uh, Nor Northern Ireland not being part of the same country. You know, right. uh, and so on. And that was a leak to, to you know, for the meat-eating crowd that support English nationalism. Yeah, but, but why? I, I thought one of the big things people always say is that Boris doesn't give a damn about the North. Uh, no. So are we saying now he suddenly had a conversion and he is? No, I, 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 no, I, th I, I think it's the, this is all feeding him. I, I know this English nationalism, you know, we're all this UK together and all this sort of stuff. So he's but using he's the protocol. Been, for, I used, used the protocol protocol and the flag for England. I've, 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 we have the flag for like uh, you know the Scots don't want him. The Welsh are certainly uh, increasingly uh, 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 disliking him, and uh, you know he's not wanting too many friends in the nationalist community in Earth. So the only uh, uh, sort of demographic that's uh, waving the flag for him are the, these English nationalists. You know the uh, you know the people who are, who are Brexit and who yeah. who don't like jo Johnny Foreigner. Yeah. Well, again, how do you see this playing out? I mean, it can't go on forever. I mean, let, let, let's say, well, we have the marching season coming up, but uh, between now and Christmas, they're going to have to resolve it in some kind of way. Do you yeah. think that Boris is going to play, play hardball and not uh, well, I don't know. I, well, if you listen to the British media, you think the EU is the bad guy. But Joe Biden uh, issued that the Marsh uh, thing, which mm. is basically a criticism from one government to another about mm. their attitude to the EU and the, the, the protocol, mm. and that the British should uh, dial down the rhetoric a wee bit. And, uh, it's, so the Americans are doing that. Yesterday, um, several of the EU people basically pointed out, look, you've broken this. Just stick to the treaty you signed up to. Mm. Uh, you know, and so as a Sekiovic, I think Gary Gibbon might have uh, quoted as well. I'm not 100% certain of himself. Look, it was written in English so you could understand it. So what's your problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's, uh, it's, it's a question of whether, I suppose, it's a more profound question. It's just like Trump. Do yeah. you, when you make agreements, do you stick to them? Now, if yeah. the UK is looking for an agreement with America or Brazil or anywhere else, it's got to have a bet. I mean, what, what, if you were doing it, You'd, first thing you'd look for is how is this, what's this guy's record like? If yeah. I sign up to this, I mean, is it going to be any point in it? Uh, yeah. Because if he's got a record, especially for something like the protocol, which is there in black and white, yeah. Uh, yeah. And a couple of months later, he turns around and says, no, who's going to trust him in another fresh deal? Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, he, know that? They, he must know yeah. that. He must know that. Uh, but uh, but uh, Jude, uh, there's this sort of thing. That he, like he was sacked from two or three jobs as a journalist, <laughs> yeah. and and he, he he come out and he ended up as British Prime Minister. Yeah. I think he thinks he can get away with anything. Well, he is getting away with anything. That's a, that's a terrible thing. He, he, people like him as a bit of a scamp. He's a clever, clever guy because yeah. Uh, what I saw yesterday. What, what was what was the what was the word you were going to actually use there, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Another word. Another word entirely. Um, yeah, but he yeah. is a clever guy. What, what, what's the abiding image I take from that uh, dude down in Cornwall is a, a shot from the air of yeah. Boris and his togs running into the sea and swimming through yeah. the sea and yeah. then coming out uh, and getting uh, carry there with a uh, carrying, <laughs> if you'll pardon the pun, carry, carrying a big uh, uh, a, a, or something. Dry, dry, him, dry himself off. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> is that what they're called? Uh, uh, and uh, that's what you remember. You're always waiting for the mood music to swing in behind yeah. it. He's, yeah. He really has got that ability. And I tell you, the Brits love that. And I also confess this. I, I kind of like politicians who've got a bit of character to them. You know, yeah, if you take uh, um, uh, Sir Keir Starmer, he's the living opposite of that. You know, he's a sort yeah. of a... Um, Pastel shades. Of yeah, stuff. you know that wall behind you. That's yeah. that's got more personality than Keir Starmer. <laughs> anyway, it's it's it really does seem um, highly irresponsible, but it'll have to be resolved some way. You might even have. Would that feed into the? I mean, uh, since the EU is not going to stop asking for this protocol, no yeah. more, uh, are there likely to have repercussions in the marching season? Dude, of course, there are. Like, if you keep stirring it. 
Uh, the, the, uh, the EU have basically said this protocol is going nowhere. We have offered you a, a solution until, until you come back and give us a solution. All the, Britons, uh, the Brits are saying is uh, uh, the, the purity of the EU's approach is uh, just trying to, they need to be more flexible. Mm -hmm. They're saying you agreed to this. There were grace periods because you understood those yeah, problems yeah. with this. And we have broken it unilaterally you know, on two occasions. Mm -hmm. And either A, you agree to what you signed up to, or we will ret retaliate. And Van, uh, Ursula von der Leyen and um, Stekovic have both uh, up, up their language in recent times saying we have had enough. They said uh, they will. Merkel they, was saying the same thing, I think. Yeah. Uh, you just can't keep on doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe uh, something was lost in translation with Macron. Maybe he said something far worse than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, tried to, they tried to dump it down. Okay. Let's go finally then to things sporting. Have you been watching the Euros? Pat. Absolutely. Have you been Dude, you know, I, I, I was I was watching you know um, going back. I was watching uh, that Christian Eriksen thing on ah, Saturday. Yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah. That was uh, I know someone I've never seen anything like that in the pitch, and it was actually it was actually it stood up. It was shocking. You know, I thought you know, I never seen it. I thought there was a young man, you know, that somebody I've actually admired as a player, and I've watched him. Uh, he's a very 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 good player, world class yeah. player. I thought he's dying on the pitch as we're watching us. Or something uh, you know that, that got to me about it because I'd never seen it. I thought here's a young man with that you know, he, and he's only what 28, 29, yeah, and so on. I thought God, you, this is unbelievable. Did you and see that? And, and it was were you actually series. watching it live, Pat? I was watching it live. Yeah. And, 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 well, and, and, well, and the camera was on him. Well, what, the camera was on him. Yeah. So quickly that this was something really serious. Jude, he, he, he fell as if a sniper had him. Absolutely, he didn't. He just fell forward flat uh, on his face. No, and nobody near him. They know well not uh, somebody behind him, and the guy behind him copped on some here. And he started you know, uh, gesticulating to the the, mm -hmm. the trainers and all that. And Jude here apparently, if uh, within uh, they get to you within three minutes with a defibrillator, you have a seventy percent chance to survive. That's how good it is if you they get the def. Like he, um, I can't remember the name of the guy Malumba or something. He was dead for seventy eight minutes. How, how he came back. I'll never know, but anyway, he came back. Now, what happens, uh, Christian Erringson, after getting hired, I, I wonder, will he ever play football at a senior well, level again? Well, it was a game I was watching yesterday. I'm not sure which one it was, but uh, the commentator mentioned the fact that, uh, what his first name is, David or something, Blind. Uh, 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 Blind. Uh, yeah. He had some kind of uh, heart problems. And yeah. he'd got some sort of, I don't know, I thought he said defibrillator or some kind uh, of thing. Yeah. And he has, yeah. he's been playing for several years now with that. Yeah, uh, as a, a Danny Blaney, he, he played for Manchester Blaney, for yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the most, I mean, it's sort of astonishing that uh, you could do that, that you could get a player uh, who, you know, would perhaps die if he wasn't getting this treatment. Uh, uh, and yet that it can be up and... Uh, but Jude, here's, here's a question, you know, I, I I avoid doctors like a plague, but I've been to a doctor and they did a sort of heart test. Somebody like Christian Eriksson, he plays for Inter Milan, played for Spurs. They would have medical uh, oh, yeah. professionals and, uh, you know, at the highest level, consultants, all the rest. Hmm. You'd wonder, how does somebody uh, at that level of fitness and all get a heart attack? Was it a long, hard season that his heart just sort of, you know, or whatever? Would you think, you know, they would have had some sort of forewarning? Well, it, it, it's happened a couple of times. Uh, it's happened in the GAA uh, at least once or twice with yeah. players who mightn't have died on the on the pitch, but, uh, you know, they, they, they were found dead. Wasn't there a guy found dead in his bed who was a really... Uh, Cormac, Mac Cormac McAnallan, the yeah, drone guy. A, a totally yeah. fit young guy. And they say, actually, that sometimes with these players, they get to a level of fitness and that actually in itself is damaging because yeah. it's demanding uh, so much of the body. Uh, by the way, just as you said something there, the, the, there's research apparently showing that this sort of high intensity training has actually can bring on a uh, motor neuron, which is a yeah. horrible, horrible, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. all the things in the world to get, that's the one thing you wouldn't want to get. But at, at least that's a sort of a gradual thing, whereas these are sudden, uh, you know, Life-threatening mm. yeah. uh, events that are. Going but I mean, why did you start asking me about the Euros? What were well, I, mean, I, was ask you, like... well, I presume you were cheering for England when they were playing. Um... Uh, Jude, here you're going to laugh at this or, or slap me one or the other. Actually, I'd rather see England winning than Croatia. Look, half of my well, my greater circle of family, my son's married to an English woman. 
uh, what he went to school there, very well, well college there. Mm-hmm. Uh, ha- half of my wife's brothers have emigrated there. Yeah. We, uh, we we support Liverpool and we support Manchester mm-hmm. United and all the rest. Of it. Mm-hmm. So I like I've never been to Croatia. Don't know anybody in Croatia. So why am I supporting Croatia? So we were. Uh, are you considering? Uh, yeah. I'm not sitting going, oh, I, I'm dying if England lose, mm. far from it. But I thought, you know, it, it didn't cause me any ill pain uh, that England won. Uh, well, it caused me a bit of pain. I'll tell you the truth with me. I'd love to have seen them walked. But I, I, to be honest, I'm, in a way, I'm sort of glad. I've, I've said this before on, on the radio, actually, about 20 <laughs> years ago. Uh, I don't worry too much whenever they succeed at the early games or even get <laughs> further to the semi-final because then they'll be in a really big <laughs> platform and then they'll get stuffed. I, I, just, I, I, I another, word, another, another words, at the pain is far greater then. So you see, the, we're not the only ones. We're not the only ones because I remember this, it was a discussion with Nicky Campbell and there was a, a woman from a journalist from Scotland uh, there was right. a guy from Wales and there was me and all three of us agreed we mm. couldn't wait to see England lose. I was worried yeah. or something. And yeah. Nicky Campbell was a bit bewildered and said, "Why? But why?" Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. we felt this. It, it just eight, eight, eight hundred years, Nicky. Eight hundred <laughs> years. <laughs> but, you, you know, again, 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 but like you, Pat, I've I've got uh, you know I've I've got two uh, daughters-in-law who are English. I've got uh, th- uh, three or no, yeah, three grandchildren who are half English at least. Yeah. Uh, so, and I mean, I love, I like the place. I like going to England and I like going to London. Yeah. I think it's great, the bloody good weather and there's lots of stuff yeah. to do. And most of the English people that I meet are really nice, in many ways yeah. much nicer than theirs. But there's something about, there's a sense of entitlement and there's a way of talking. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's, uh, that, yeah. Uh, there's no argument with that. You know, by the way, there was a Dennis Law. I was watching, I think it was last Monday night on Sky because there's very little on TV these days. Yeah. And I've watched a couple of these ones. And the one, the one was uh, Dennis Law. And the time, you know, D- Dennis Law, the time England were playing in the World Cup, even out playing golf, wouldn't watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> Bad for his blood pressure. <laughs> Aye. And, and, like, and, and he admitted totally he didn't want England to win. <laughs> well, uh, so who do you tip to win the, win the tournament? I actually think, right, you're going to laugh again. I think England have a really good chance of winning this. Now, the team I would presume they have to beat uh, if they get is France. And the other one I would put a button on is Belgium. Belgium are missing a couple of their world class players, including De Bruyne and um, so on. But he he might be in back, coming back. You know, uh, Holland as well. Hey, they're missing a couple of really good players. But hey, they look a good team too. I do, I do. I watched the Holland game. But uh, uh, you didn't mention Germany. Uh, Germans have no stars, but they always won. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say it was, a game, it was a game that lasted for 120 minutes, uh, yeah. and then there was penalties, and the Germans win. That's a yeah, that's, that's how it yeah. they, they, they say they, you know, uh, I remember there was a guy. I think he's called Briegel. He's about six foot three. He played left back, and apparently he wasn't a footballer at all. He was a decathlete. But that's that's the sort of people they put in their team. <laughs> 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 anyway, I said it, 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 my only problem is that it's there's too much of it. You know, it, it comes yeah. in three bloody games, so you just can't watch three games in a row. Um, yeah. So hold on a second. Are you recording? Yeah, you are recording. I'm recording it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I won't I, come in. Dude, except, this is our day for my uh, wee six-year-old neighbor was knocking at me one or two minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> well, listen, maybe we'll leave it at that, Pat. Oh, and on, on that note, I get into trouble. Okay. I like. Okay, all the best, Pat. Okay. All the best, Jude. Good luck. Bye.